Good day, everyone! Welcome! My name is Loreto Atamosa, your instructor for Jed 5 with the description, Readings in the Philippine History. For today's video discussion, we will talk about the writings about the Philippines and its people. This is a four-part video discussion that will talk about the Philippines at the time of Spanish contact, Placentia's Code on the Ancient Customs of the Tagalogs, Customs of the Tagalogs, their gods, burials, and superstitions, and lastly, First Voyage Around the World by Antonio Pegafera. You see, the early Filipinos build relationship with people from other lands. Either the Filipinos visit to other countries, or they were visited by foreigners. The accounts made by people from other land provide a window of how early Filipinos lived, what were their clothes, how did they eat, or how did they make a living. So these accounts became an early and reliable source of reference on the lives of our ancestors. Some accounts made to serve as to alcalde mayors in settlement of dispute among native Filipinos. Others are made as proof of their expedition of the islands and one account is considered the first civil code of the Philippines made by Fray Juan de Placentia. More accounts of different expeditions and observations of our ancestors will be discussed in the following video discussions. So for today's video discussion, we will focus on the first topic which is the Philippines at the time of Spanish contact. And our objectives for this video discussion are the following. First is to synthesize the important key points in Luarca's account, and second is to identify the symbols used to present meaning in sample image. And so, let's start! If you happen to notice, hindi natin maipagkakailan na ang early Filipinos developed contacts with peoples from other lands. The accounts of encounters of early Filipinos with people from other lands provide with the idea kung papaano namuhay ang mga Pilipino sa panahong iyon. Kabilang na dito kung ano yung suot nila, how did they eat, or how did they make living. So these accounts became an early and very reliable source of references on the lives of our ancestors. And so, sa panahon na tayo ay pinamumunuan ng mga Kastila from 1565 to 1898, isa sa mga official na nandito sa Pilipinas ay si Miguel de Luarca. He was one of the Spanish officials to arrive in the Philippines. He was a member of a Spanish expedition to China. Luarca's contribution to the Philippine historiography was his work entitled Relacion de las Islas Filipinas. His work on the Philippines was published in 1582. Luarca's Relacion was one of the early writings about the inhabitants of the Philippines aside from those written by members of Magellan and Legazpi Expedition. Ang Relacion de las Islas Filipinas ay isang pahayag tungkol sa kapuluan ng Pilipinas kung saan itinala at sinuri lahat ng puok at mga tao na nasakop sa ilalim ng pamumuno ng mga Kastila. And now let's revisit the important notes according to Miguel de Luarca in his works Relacion de las Islas Filipinas. And these are On the Practices of the Natives, Laro of the Dead, War, Laws, Laws of Slavery, Thieves, and Marriage among Slaves. Let's start! Ready! So on the Practices of the Natives, according to Luarca, Merong dalawang uring Pilipino na matatagpuan sa Pilipinas, who although of the same race, but differ somewhat in their customs and are almost always on mutual unfriendly terms. One class includes those who live along the coast, and the other class those who live in the mountains. Now the inhabitants of the mountains cannot live without fish, salt, and other articles of food, and the jars including dishes of other districts. Nor, on the other hand, can those of the coast live without the rice and cotton of the mountaineers. So since the natives are not acquainted with the art of writing, they preserve their ancient lure through songs, which they sing in a pleasing manner. Now let's proceed to Lara of the Dead. Lara of the Dead means that is mourning. So the rules requires that when a chief dies, all must mourn him and most observe the following restrictions. And these are the following. 
No one should quarrel with any other during the time of mourning, and especially at the time of burial. Spears must be carried point downward, and daggers be carried in the belt with hilt reversed. No gala or colored dress shall be worn during that time. Lastly, there must be no singing on board on a barangay when returning to the village, but must strict silence maintained. And so, ito yung mga bagay na ino-observe pag ang chief sa isang tribo ay pumanaw at kung sino man ang mahuling lumabag with the law must pay the penalty without fail and be a slave. Now, let's talk about war. Now, there are three cases in which these natives regard war as just. The first is when a tribe goes to another village and is there put to death without cause. Second, when their wives are stolen from them. And then the third is when they go in friendly manner to trade at any village and there, under the appearance of friendship, are wronged or maltreated. Ready? And let's proceed to the laws. So sa kasalukuyan, meron tayong tinatawag na saligang batas na kung saan ginagamit itong bilang basis para sa mga ipinapatupad na batas sa ating bansa. Now according to Luarca, the chiefs are the only laws and are defenders and executors of their barangays. So there are no judge, although there are mediators who go from one party to another to bring about reconciliation. And for the law of slavery, according to Luarca, no man in this country is made a slave or is put to death for any crime which he commit, even if he be theft, adultery, or murder. Except that for each crime, there is an established fine, which they have to pay in jewels or gold. And if the culprit is unable to pay the fine, he will borrow the money and pledge himself to the man from whom he borrows. As a result, he becomes a slave until he shall repay what was lent to him, after that he is free again. And there are three classes of slaves in these islands. The first is called Ayue. These slaves work three days for the master and one for themselves. Another class of slaves are called Tumaranpuk. They live in their own houses and are obliged to go to work for their master one day out of four, having the three days for themselves. This last class of slaves is respected among the previous two. They are called Tumatabans. They work in the house of their master only when there is banquet. During their lifetime, these slaves are bound to work for their master five days in a month, or if they do not work, they annually give their masters five chichabites of rice. And then let's proceed with thieves. So if a thief commits a great robbery, he and all his relatives, or at least his nearest kin, are fined. If they are unable to pay the fine, they are made slaves. In fact, this law applies to all classes, even to the chief themselves. Accordingly, if a chief commits any crime, even against one of his own slaves, he is fined in the same manner. And lastly, marriage among slaves. So the poor slaves who serve in the houses marry each other without drinking. They observe no ceremony, but simply say to each other, let us marry. If a free man marries a female slave or vice versa, half of the children are slaves. Therefore, if there are two children, one is free and the other is a slave. And the parent may choose. Alrighty, that's the end of our first lesson and the writing about the Philippines and its people. See you guys in lesson two. Goodbye!